So good morning to everybody and thank you for coming together. This is really important to me and I've wanted to have you together for a long time for a conversation. Um, I'd like to start by saying um, a couple of things. Uh, first is about the importance and the challenge of teaching young children and elementary age children. Uh, it is a highly underestimated, undervalued work. It is extremely complex. And it's complex in the sense that it's not only emotionally and physically challenging, but it is intellectually difficult and complex and challenging also. And a lot of people don't understand that. And one of the reasons I wanted you to come together today for this conversation is I thought we might be able to change that image a little bit here. Why just men in this group? Well, first of all, we don't have enough men in education. And we certainly don't have enough men in early childhood and elementary age uh, teaching in this country. And not only that, but I think the society at large has an image of men going into high profile or striving uh, to uh, go into different kinds of work. But it's sort of a surprise for some families and some people to find that uh, the men in their lives or in their acquaintance are really excited and passionate about this work. Robert, you wanted to say something about community in response to the talk. Oh, right. Um, just the whole idea of a community of learners. Mm -hmm. um, what I think we all brought up and talked about. And I think one of the fantastic things is is a community of learners in the classroom with the, uh, whether it's early childhood or childhood, and at this point I've, I've had the chance to um, observe really interesting classes, whether at uh, the public school uh, fourth and fifth grade level or um, at the uh, ECC, at the uh, threes and fours, but where there's also a community of learners are, are in our graduate program classes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and the idea of sitting around and at a circle table and having these conversations that are uh, supported by text, supported by our experiences, mm -hmm. and, and supported by the spontaneity of what each of us feels is, is, is important, and to go back and forth, and to go around. And, and so I think we can be teachers and bring a community of learners to the classroom, because Sarah, Sarah Wilford put the program together so we could learn how to be a community of learners in the class. What really struck me about the program here at Sarah Lawrence as well um, is that it, the art of teaching really makes visible the how complex the process of teaching and learning is. We all had something inside of us mm -hmm. that, that we wanted to do it. We may not, not have known exactly mm -hmm. what it was, but something sparked it. Mm -hmm. And then whether it was, uh, Ita was talking about, you know, the child, that feeling that you get when, you know, you see a child smile and discover something. Mm -hmm. And then once you see that, I feel once you see that, you want to keep feeding it and feeding it and then you want more. Right. And, you, and you keep wanting to do it, and that, and that, and that's what keeps me going. You know, you have a rough day, then you're able to wake up and reset yourself, right? And 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 go back at it. You know, that's the thing I I heard a lot, and yeah. Yeah. you know, and it's nice to hear, you know, other, you know, guys, you know, talking <laughs> about <laughs> like you, you know, and that, that that feels good. You know, you know. Like, Oh, okay, I got him. Okay, now let's see if I can get it again. Let's see if I can get it again. And that's what that's what gets me. That's what gets me going. I'm able to reset myself every day and work with these children. I think the reason I was I was excited about starting this program that was 26 years ago. I was asked if I'd be interested in starting a program here um, in uh, elementary education, and. I got terribly excited by it because I was I was a classroom teacher before I came to Sarah Lawrence uh, as director of the Early Childhood Center, and I didn't think I ever wanted to stop being a classroom teacher. But I remember a particular day, and one of those moments when I looked at my class, and I thought, 
I love every single kid in this room. And then I sort of wondered, how is that possible? <laughs> but that's what happens with a community. They are giving to you absolutely as much as you're giving to them. And it becomes a passion. So it was a lot to give up, actually, to come here. And I'm glad in many ways that I did, but that is, I always say, that was the core of my professional life. I always think about uh, how other schools often talk about they have their educational programs really designed around pr um, lesson planning. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like mm -hmm. taking uh, courses that teach you how to teach yeah. um, certain kinds of uh, academic content um, or make plans and then how to make them fit the standards or whatever. But here, it's sort of like a whole different approach towards it. Like We do talk about what uh, the academic content, but it comes from a very different angle without those uh, um, guidelines, I guess, that they have. Uh, when I first started thinking about teaching, one of the things I was nervous about was giving up my other interests. And, um, uh, you know, since this is, this is the, the guys around the table, you know, I'm a guy, I have interests, I, I, I like to do a lot of uh, uh, different stuff, you know, activities, um, I, I juggle and I do music and I, I do um, video, so like technology stuff and all these things. I thought were different professions that I could go into. I could go into music or I could go into video. Um, but the nice thing about teaching is actually that you get to go into all of them, um, which is, and I'm serious about that because, um, you know, in the classroom, I've brought music into the classroom and, and, and technology into it. And these guys have too. I've, I've seen them do it. And uh, so that's, you know, something for, for someone who's thinking about teaching to, to think about um, that they can, they can do those things and actually get a lot out of it. What this program does is asking what's the point of all of this at mm -hmm. the end, dealing with education. And that's what brings the personal world of each of us and uh, observing interest of the students, ourselves, and that's what makes it genuine. And all yeah. that you said about the guidelines, it is so hard because if you see a bunch of guidelines that don't interest interest you. Right. How can it interest someone else? You really need to really needs to come from the classroom and that's that's how community starts. For myself I mean I I was never gonna be a, a doctor. Um, and then what happened at, actually at one point before entering the, the, the teaching program was I got interested in computers. Um, and technology has always been something that's uh, very interesting to me as well. But I found that teaching itself has sort of this, uh, I want to say like a whole bunch of veins poking out of it. If it was like a circle, there's a whole bunch of veins poking out of it that reach out to the other professions. Um, mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily lose it, those, those interests and those other things. You sort of integrate it. Like teaching itself becomes enlarged by everything else. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I mean, I, I only know from specific people's examples. Like, I think about um, Ben, who has this sort of, like, music thing that he has. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I, 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 he was I, 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 But, like, how it's not, go it's not gone. It's still there. And now he's actually integrated to his, his teaching yeah. profession. And then Vitaly, who has his art background, mm -hmm. has integrated it to his teaching profession. And then for myself, I try to find ways to integrate my technology bit, too. Mm -hmm. right. But then at the same time, while I was never meant to be... Uh, well, I was never meant to be a doctor, or was going to be a doctor. Sometime, from time to time, I say, you know, I feel like I really feel like I should start taking up that book on uh, physiology and anatomy again, and trying to see what I can get out of that book. Like, mm -hmm. I have this. I think that's what also was so important about the art of teaching here is that it made me want to keep learning more. Right. Yeah. I mean, I have a different way of looking at words. Like, I have. I'm very, very. I discriminate words. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, there's just these choices of words that people pick, that we pick, mm -hmm. that sometimes become coined in a way. Um, Child-centered. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. And I, it's hard for me to say this, but sometimes the word community bothers me too, mm -hmm. in a sense, because what do we mean? People use the word yeah. frequently, but what do we really mean by the word? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, should, we should maybe talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like, the, the, there's something about words that have to be broken apart, I think, that mm -hmm. Um, I sometimes feel is missing in the conversation of education, and we just sort of keep using it over and over again, um, and then it loses its meaning. I guess I, I draw a lot from my own personal experiences, and it's very personal in a sense that, like, 
I've been with friends, groups of friends, but I've never really found a place with friends, and it always seems to be, like we say, we're this, we're, we feel like a family, you know, like, but then all of a sudden they leave, or we drift apart, and I find another group, and the same thing is repeated. And so then, when I hear people use the word, the word is very sensitive to me because I have, I've had these yeah. bad past experience, I guess, with what it means. But then I hear it used a lot, so what do you really mean? Like, and then, like I was, when I think of the word community, I mean like, I think similar to maybe found based on family relationships, like you are, you're close to people, you support other people, you, you, you're there for them, you, you teach each other, you learn from each other. And then when I hear, when I see, hear that word used, in a certain kind of context, yeah. then I do look for those particular patterns, and I often don't see it. Mm-hmm. And I'm confused, like, why are we using this word? Uh, I've worked in schools where there seems to be a lot of that fake, not fake community, maybe maybe good intentions, but um, forced. really an artificial forced kind mm-hmm. of feeling mm-hmm. uh, of community. And um, it, it, it's, it's troubling because... Um, it seems like it's teaching the opposite of what we actually want to teach by having these community programs usually they have a name or something like that and and I won't name programs because then we'll know what schools they belong to but you know something like like uh, something might have a slogan like you know we are a community or so, something something artificial and uh, so, something where um, teachers will say this to their students when maybe they're tr- treating each other uh, negatively or something like that, like teachers will bring in, uh, like remember we have this program, remember we agreed that we are all going to be a community, <laughs> and things like that, and that uh, is, it, that, that's not community, um, and uh, what, what, what I view as, as community is some of the stuff that we've been talking about where it's, it's, a, very, um, it's a very natural thing, because you're all, uh, as a classroom teacher, you're, and, and, and students in a classroom, you're, you're in that room for uh, seven hours uh, a day, five days a week, and um, if you give room for discussions uh, and for sh- sharing stuff and getting to know each other, um, you know, I've witnessed myself that these classroom communities can be uh, almost as strong as, you know, family or something like that. You know, to me, to talk about community, it's, it's, it's such a powerful word because I actually did my, my oral, my, I work on my thesis about building community. So I, I do understand where you're coming from when you say, oh, it feels like people are referring to this word on the regular, on the regular basis, but they don't really mean it. Mm-hmm. And I'm working in this school where I walk in the first day and I was observing. And then, at some point, after several months, I came to terms and I identified the community of that school. No one said, oh, Paolo, we're doing this because we're building community. It was kind of like an organic process, right? Natural process, everyone. Everyone was doing different things. Everyone was um, working on different curriculum pieces and I was able to really observe the same community thread, right? Mm-hmm. It's when I came to terms and I said, oh, this is definitely community. Mm-hmm. But they were not telling me, oh, Paul, yeah. here mm-hmm. we are reinforcing community. They were not telling me oh. that. They were not, their mission, they were, they were not trying to convince me or sell me the idea of community and family. I got it yeah. because I felt it. Mm-hmm. It was coming from them. So in that sense, and following um, Sarah's uh, idea that you definitely need, as a teacher, you need to set an environment where all of these children can really feel comfortable expressing who they are. I used to work at a uh, low income, it was low, ki- low the low income housing had a pro- after school program downstairs and you know like across the street you, you see the cop cars in front all the time people running around crazy so i'm kind of standing out in front waiting for, for a ride and these guys approach me ready to you know they're gonna jump on me and i saw one of the kids come outside and 
yo, Brandon, Brandon, that's my teacher. He's fine. Leave him alone. He helped me with the math. Remember the math? He couldn't figure out. He helped me with the math. Uh -huh. Oh, and then the guy goes, oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. I walked away. And she's like rolling her eyes like, oh, my God, he's so silly. Uh, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. And it was just like, you know, I... <laughs> I'm standing there like shaking, like I'm, I'm fucking get beat, uh, beat up, and I have, I can't do anything. And this kid ran outside, and and just you know that was I was like uh, thank you, and, uh, and it was no it, it 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 seemed like no big deal to her, but to me that meant like you know I touched her enough that she ran from upstairs downstairs outside tell her brother who I was and what I did for her, and. He immediately, he was like, oh, I'm sorry about that. He was very apologetic. He's like, I didn't know who you were. I thought you were, you know, I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, you gotta, I got to act like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. But inside, I'm like, oh, my God. But, um, but the power of her that, message that, to to mm -hmm. that threatening person mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's also the the power of the child to save you. So, you yes. Know, yes. In a situation that's, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and let me just say thank you, Vitali. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Tuan. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Cameron, for being part of the Art of Teaching program at St. Lawrence College. It's uh, been a hugely rewarding time. We've spent a long time together. Um, but I, 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 um, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>